All right, so everyone, thank you uh, for being with us uh, for this exciting uh, presentation uh, by Fire Centaur and uh, Edmund Edgar. Uh, they're going to talk about Sludel and the Avatar, Avatar Classroom, uh, which is uh, a platform that they're going to introduce today. Um, but just before I get uh, started, um, I would like to thank them for, for being there, for being with us and uh, uh, taking the time uh, to introduce their project. Or, or their product, actually, because it's not a project anymore. It is a full product. And uh, I would like also to, uh, to, to thank Marius uh, for filming us, <clears throat> filming this presentation uh, live streaming uh, in Agod Adobe Connect. Uh, you will find the link um, of uh, the room. Uh, hang on a second. I'll just give it to you right now. Uh, in the local chat, if you have people who are not on Second Life and who would like to see this uh, session, uh, please pass, pass it on. So without further ado, I will introduce you to first uh, Paul Pre uh, Prybish. Is it uh, the way I should say it? Prybish? Perfect. Yes, that's perfect. Yes. Okay, so and who's uh, famously known in, uh, as Fire Centaur here on Second Life. Um, Paul uh, graduated from Simon Fraser University in Computing Science. Uh, he spent five years teaching in English, uh, teaching English in South Korea, and now is living in Tokyo, Japan, where he works as a full-time web developer and programmer for an e-learning software company. Uh, Paul has had a, an isle, uh, has an island. You mentioned that you still have have it. You still have English Village. Um, yes, I do. Yeah. So you have an island. You have an island uh, on Second Life called English Village since 2006, and uh, you are the, the lead developer of uh, the Sludel project, um, which was in 2009 and 2010. Um, and you've you've been an active presenter for educational conferences in Second Life, including uh, several languages from 2006 and to, to 2011. Um, <clears throat> you've also presented across Korea at several co uh, co Korean co-TESL conferences in 2011, and you are currently working with Edmund Edgar on the Avatar Classroom, uh, which is a turnkey Moodle Sludel solution to connect 3D classrooms with quizzes, assignments, and role play activities. Uh, I would like also to thank Edmund Edgar for being with us. Um, Edmund graduated from Oxford University in Philosophy and Modern Languages in 1997. Uh, he spends three years in, as an English teacher in high school and junior high school in rural Japan before moving to Tokyo to work on the on Internet School Linking Projects, Development and System Administration for a variety of clients, including the British Council, the Pr Princeton Review and Serigo Japan, creators of the I Know Language Learning site. He started working in virtual worlds in 2006 and founded his own company, Social Minds in 2009. He is one of the original developers of the Sludo project connecting Moodle with virtual worlds. So without further ado, please uh, join me uh, to welcome Fire Centaur and Henry Edgar for this exciting presentation. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Saibir, uh, for introducing, giving us the, the nice welcome. Um, this is uh, really fantastic uh, to be here, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, this is my fifth uh, consecutive year presenting at SL Languages. So um, thank you very much, Haiki Philip and the Avalon, Pro uh, Avalon team for inviting us back and coordinating, coordinating this event. I know it, it does take a lot of work to put these things together. And um, uh, so thanks, uh, Million, for, for inviting us. It's great to be here. Today's presentation is on Moodle and Sludel. Since most of you are already familiar with uh, virtual worlds and Second Life, we're going to dive right in and show you how you can uh, utilize Moodle, a learning management system, to enhance your virtual teaching in Second Life and OpenSim. So let's talk about Moodle. How many of you in the audience are familiar with Moodle? David um, Parrott uses it and Melinda um, uses it at the university. Coco says that she's used it. Matthew uh, uses Moodle, old Moodle, that's cool. And Losarium says she's used it as well. Oh, and by the way, right now in front of us, we do actually have a Moodle tool it's called the Web Intercom. It's the yellow box right in front of me. If you do click on it, you'll get a dialog box that says one. If you press record, you can have all your chat go into our Moodle chat room, which I'll copy and paste and put on the blog later. Okay, great. So it looks like we've got, there are quite a few people in the audience that are familiar with Moodle. That's great. So Moodle is uh, open source software. 
meaning it's free. You can install on your website, enabling your students to log in with the username and password and access quizzes you have created for them, assignments, presentations, and even classroom forums. All activity results are recorded automatically in Moodle's gradebook, and Moodle enables teachers to host online classes for their students. So that's basically a Moodle in a nutshell. Edmund, do you want to talk about Moodle's philosophy? Okay, so Moodle was made by a guy called uh, Martin Dagiamus originally, where well, it's now a, a big community thing, all kinds of people are chipping in. But th this guy, when he originally came up with it, um, it was his uh, his doctoral um, project, and he came at it from from the sort of from the from a pedagogy and really more than a, a technology end. And so he he was basing it on theory of social constructionism. With he's got these kind of five um, basic rules that he thinks should guide, well, the, the way we teach, but particularly the, the way we build our, our learning management system. So here they are, that everybody's a potential teacher as well as a, a, a learner, and that when you're collaborating right, you're learning and teaching at the same time. Um, that you learn well from the act of creating and expressing things for other people to see, and that you learn a lot by observing other people who are around you, and by understanding what they're doing, you can you can teach more uh, transformationally, more interestingly. And that finally, the kind of related to these, that a learning environment needs to be flexible and adaptable, so that you can you know respond to the needs of the, of the participants. So with those goals in mind, he came up with Moodle, which has a you know this sort of 2D system, web system, but it has a lot of kind of collaborative stuff in it that's designed to get students creating content for each other, students learning from each other, and make it possible for people to, to see what, what students are doing and, and what teachers are doing. So you've got your glossary tools and your wiki tools, you've got your user profiles that when you, just to create an account, you have to put in some information about yourself. You have your survey tools and sort of feedback tools to get opinions. You have all kinds of tracking tools in there. And when you start out with a new course in Moodle, a lot of learning management systems will, will kind of already have an idea of what there should be in a class. But Moodle kind of gives you a big blank space and the, and the teacher or whoever's controlling the the course then fills it in with what they should be, what, what they think it, it should be like. This was all designed for a 2D system, but we think that in a virtual world, there's all kinds of things that, that we can do that gives you a lot more along those lines, you know, that you can, that, that everybody's kind of expressing themselves with their own avatar, everyone's building and creating, you can see what the other people are building. You've got this big, you know, this wonderful shared space. So we think there's a very nice kind of match between uh, virtual worlds and Moodle. So we've come up with Sloodle, which connects the two and does a lot of the, especially a lot of the synchronous stuff when you've got everyone um, working at the same time. We do that in a 3D virtual world um, and we get all the data back in your Moodle system. So you can do all your tracking and you can, you know, manage who, who's in your course and all this stuff in Moodle. Okay, Fire, do you want to do the next thing? Awesome. Thanks, Ed. So there's quite a bit of online resources about Moodle where you can go to to learn more. Currently, uh, Nelly Dutch of integratingtechnology.org has put together several Moodle courses for teachers to hone uh, their skills, um, more acquainted with using Moodle for their classes. If you want to jumpstart, I'd recommend checking her courses out. And so if you go to integrating-technology.org, um, you can find some of her courses there. I'm just going to put that in the chat. For you. There we go. There's also, of course, the Moodle.org uh, homepage. If you go there, you can find a lot of information about Moodle. And since Moodle's been around for quite some time now, there are quite a few books on Amazon.com which you can um, order as ebooks or paperbacks. So that's some resources for you to learn uh, more about Moodle. So let's get into Sloodle. What is Sloodle? Well, uh, quite simply, it's a software plugin for Moodle that allows virtual world objects built in Second Life and OpenSim to connect with Moodle. So like Moodle, Sloodle is totally free. It's licensed under the GPL 3.0 license, which means you can do with it as you wish. Uh, so if you distribute Sloodle, you just have to also include the uh, source code along with it. This is a great licensing model because it allows the community to really get involved and continue to make Sloodle better and better. So as you can see in this slide, um, you've got your, your students there on computers, but now they're representing themselves as their own avatars. And their avatars are interacting with these Sloodle tools inside Second Life. And those uh, Sloodle tools are connecting with your uh, Moodle on your host on your server and passing data back and forth. Let's talk about Sloodle's history. 
Sludo is a brainchild of Professor Jeremy Kemp of San Jose State University. In 2007, Professor Daniel Livingstone posted the idea on the SLED mailing list. Um, it was then picked up by a few developers, including Edmund Edgar and Peter Bloomfield, who started working on the code. Then in 2008, the great people at EduServe uh, decided to fund the Sludl project. I was then hired as a full-time developer to get Sludl to its 1.0 version. Edmund and I have uh, then started working together in 2009 to present and have released its next major version, Sludl 2.0. That's Sludl's history. Now let's get back to the tool set, the in-world tools, which your online users will be able to interact with, with their avatars. Okay, so here are some example Sludl tools. We've got the, the first tool is the Rezzer, and that's, the Rezzer is, is kind of the toolbox where all the other tools are inside of. The next tool that we have is the scoreboard. This is a very cool tool. It allows you to use points and different uh, currencies you define to award your students in Second Life and OpenSim to motivate them. It's uh, fully uh, controllable by the administrator. So if you want to give any of your users points in your class, we've got a HUD, which you can just select the user and add points to their score, and their, their score will be updated on the scoreboard. Scores are automatically sorted, so the, highest, the person with the highest points will be listed first. And with the, with one of the coolest things about the scoreboard is you can actually create your own currencies. So instead of just awarding points, you can award gold coins or silver coins or oil or wood or whatever you choose. And this can be quite interesting for role play activities and for economics classes. So all the currencies can be defined inside your Moodle. And then when you res your scoreboard, you can configure it to use a particular currency. The next tool we have is quiz chair. The quiz chair will hook up to a Moodle quiz. Um, in Moodle, it's quite cool because you can, as a teacher, you can add a whole bunch of questions, multiple choice questions to a Moodle question bank. And then when you create a quiz, you can choose which question from the question bank get um, put into the quiz. And then the quiz chair, once you resident world, you can connect that quiz chair to one of the quizzes. And when your student sits on it, it will go, I mean, it'll ask the student a question and it's a dialogue. And the quiz chair will go up if the, if the student uh, gets the answer correct and it will go down if they get the answer correct. So in the Avatar classroom, we have situated all the quiz chairs above the big shark pool. So if the, if the students get the wrong answer, they'll be eaten by sharks. So we have a few other tools. The one right in front of us is called the Web Intercom. In Moodle, you can set up uh, chat rooms so that you can facilitate online uh, chats with your students. The, the web intercom will automatically bridge the chat between Second Life and a Moodle, Moodle chat room. So whatever you type in the Moodle chat room will be relayed in Second Life after a few seconds and vice versa. And the great thing about the Moodle chat room is all chats are archived. So you can have, so for example, for language lessons, you might want to assign your students uh, a lesson where they have to meet each other meet each other every every Friday and uh, discuss a certain topic uh, using the web intercom and then review their chats and their progress uh, later um, at a later date and then give them points or award them a grade in the in the grade book so that's a useful tool you might also want to use the web intercom for people that can't enter Second Life perhaps they don't have a fast enough computers um, they can still then participate in that chat if they just visit the Moodle chat room their chat can be relayed inside Second Life so that's the Moodle chat room we also have a, an assignment a Dropbox where students can actually submit assignments uh, virtual assignments into this Dropbox in Second Life and your teachers um, on your Moodle website will get notified that the, a submission has been made and they can then teleport into Second Life and view what the student has uh, selected. All of this is then recorded in the gradebook and you can assign a student a grade for, the, for what they've uh, submitted. We also have a vending machine. The vending machine is quite uh, neat. It's a way that you can distribute objects to students. Maybe if you have a role play and there's certain costumes your students must uh, um, get and wear, you can put all of those objects inside the vending machine. Students can click on the vending machine and get those objects. Or they can go to the website and click on the vending machine activity. And they, can see, they'll, they will see a list of all its contents, and they can have those contents delivered to their avatar through the website, much like how the Second Life Marketplace works. We've designed the Moodle Rezzer screens using the iPhone WebKit. So it's got a quite a familiar in, uh, interface. It works just like an iPhone. What we've created is the concept of scenes 
you can add a scene to your uh, to the render, and within that scene, you can add different ob different slew objects. Uh, you can then res all of the objects in the scene, move them around to any location you want, and then press the freeze button. What the freeze will do is it will save all the coordinates of those objects inside Second Life. And even if you if you move the classroom a little bit, all of the objects locations will be updated and they will be they will move in coordination with the classroom. So this allows you to build um, if you have uh, a sim uh, an island where you have limited number of prims, you can then create a scene for different classes that you have uh, to save prims. And then when when let's say Monday's lessons come comes up, you can res Monday's lessons objects and then you can de-res them using the reser. And then when Tuesday comes up, you can res uh, Tuesday's objects. So this is a way to organize your virtual objects and it's all saved within um, your Moodle. You can also use these uh, iPhone-like screens to configure your objects. So once a, scene, once a object has been added to your scene, you can click on that object and it will show a configuration page where you can select, for example, um, which quiz the quiz chair connects to, how many points you want to give the student for every correct answer, and so on. Avatar Classroom is based on Sloodle. It's actually the exact same code. What we found was in earlier years, it was quite difficult to set up Sloodle. You needed to have a whole bunch of different types of skill sets. You needed to know how to install Moodle, configure each item. It took people about two weeks, two months, just to get their, their Moodle set up with Sloodle installed. We wanted to create a turnkey solution. Once you sign up on the website, what we do in the background is automatically we create a Moodle site for you, install Sloodle automatically, and then everything is automatically configured. So it's really a really quick way to get started with Loodle. We recommend that if you want to get started with Loodle and see what it's all about, try the Avatar Classroom first. And then if after, after a month, if you decide you want it on your own server, then you could, once you're familiar with, with uh, how Loodle works, you can install it on your own server. This is the 2D uh, Moodle version of the Avatar Classroom. This is what it looks like once you get a, a classroom set up. Uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, it comes in four different colors, red, green, blue, and yellow. Okay, now to get, avatar, to get an Avatar Classroom, first of all, you have to create an account on avatarclassroom.com. And then we recommend you view the Getting Started Guide. So what I did was I went through every single tool and I created a visual uh, diagram of how, what each button does. Most people don't read it, but I really highly uh, recommend just take, your, take some time and go to uh, avatarclassroom.com slash getting started. Um, all the tools listed are exactly the same as the Sloodle tools, so it'll help you with Sloodle as well. After you've kind of read through the Getting Started Guide, um, you can go to the Sloodle headquarters on uh, English Village. Um, I've, if you go to um, www.avatarclassroom.com slash inworldvendors, um, I have a slurl that'll take you right to this, um, this uh, headquarters. Okay, so I'm going to, to stop there. Um, and uh, we should uh, maybe open the floor for some questions. Or Ed, do you want to talk about what we're working on uh, next for Sloodle? Um, okay, just a quick um, kind of sneak preview of um, some, some new stuff that, that's coming out. Um, one thing, actually, we've already got this running on Avatar Classroom is the, um, is the, the postcard blogging tool. Um, this was in previous versions of Sloodle. There was, kind of a, there was a, an, an add-on you could install, um, but we've built it into the, um, the, main, uh, uh, the main thing. Um, and with, with Avatar Classroom, it's set up so it's, it's very easy, easy to use. So what you can do is, anyway, you just take a snapshot, you email it to blog at whatever your site name is, like blog at englishvillage.avatarclassroom.com, um, and it'll show up on your, it, it, um, assuming you're already registered for that, um, that Sloodle site, it'll show up immediately in your blog. Um, so, so that's a very nice tool, and it, and it also keeps, uh, keeps track of where you, you sent it from. We only have, I got the, the note that we only have 19 minutes left. So we've talked a lot. I'd really like to show you this. Would you guys like, should we take you upstairs to show you the uh, Avatar Classroom? Yes, yeah, so okay, everyone, um, if anyone can stand up. This is a teleporter right here. This is actually a Sloodle tool that we haven't released yet, but it's um, configurable via the reser. If you just click on it, if you hover over it, you'll see a little kind of seat icon comes down, just click on it and you'll be transported up.
By the way, this is all going to be uh, integrated with the point stuff, so that, so you're going to be able to um, to say only if you've got these many points of this currency you can you can use teleporter. It's going to be uh, it's going to be quite interesting. Is it funny to watch? <laughs> yeah, it is funny to watch. It's kind of interesting because like it looks like they come down, but then they they're actually up there. So this can be um, part of um, a mystery program or a, sort of a task-based uh, uh, scenario that you have in second, second Life. Maybe the students have to get a certain amount of points by answering quiz questions before they can teleport someplace. We might, next time we're going to put more than one teleporter, I think. <laughs> Oh, I think both I think people I'm are kind of stuck going in up. There. <laughs> I'm just going to stand up again. Okay, there they are. Good. Okay, guys. Um, this is the avatar classroom up here. Um, this is the uh, registration scene. Uh, it comes with part of uh, the first scene in the avatar classroom. You, the reds are over here. So using this reser, you can actually uh, res or de-res uh, different scenes you want. Uh, right now, I've got all four scenes. Each floor is a different scene. Um, this area, this registration area, is kind of the area where your students maybe come first. You can put posters on the wall, if you like, of your class, maybe some information. Um, if you guys want to follow me up here to floor two, This is our presentation scene. Uh, we've placed a bunch of different chairs here, so you can use it to give presentations. On the far wall, we've got a Sloodle presenter. If you upload your slides to your Moodle, if you've got shared media browser, your slides in Moodle can be displayed inside Second Life, so that saves you having to upload textures. Um, we've also created this Twitter wall. It's a shared media Twitter wall. So you can, on a, on a special chat channel, you can type in a hashtag. I should actually, can you tell me what the hashtag is, Siberia? Yes, it's a hash, I'll, I'll type it in the uh, uh, chat. Thanks. This is the discussion area. It's basically the same thing as the presentation scene, except we've, we've orientated the uh, seats in a circle um, to facilitate may maybe a weekly discussion that you want to tell your students to, um, if you want to assign to your students. So um, typically um, in a language course, one of your students might be given a topic and they're the conversation leader and all of the students have to come here and have a conversation. We've also got a vending machine over here so you can click on it and get different objects. I don't think I have anything in there right now. Okay, and then now here's a the fun scene. <laughs> this is the uh, quiz, uh, scene four, uh, floor four, is the quiz scene. And what you can see is I actually have a shark pool down there. I'm going to close the door so you don't fall in. Okay, good. The doors are closed, so you won't fall in yet. Um, what you can do is you can sit on one of those. Uh, you can sit on one of those quiz chairs, and it'll start giving you a quiz about the avatar classroom. And what you'll do is, uh, what you can do is, you can see uh, your score will be listed on the scoreboard when you answer a question correctly. So you can have a go at it if you like. Whoa! Someone has <laughs> fell in the water. Oh, and I should say that um, we actually <laughs> added lasers. Uh, the sharks have been upgraded. They now have lasers attached to their heads. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen uh, Mike Myers' uh, video on a, or movie with Dr. Evil. Well, they had uh, lasers attached to the heads of the sharks, so we have that now, too. <laughs> the sharks will actually shoot you and attack you when you're, if you fall into the shark pool. Okay, good. If you look on the scoreboard, you can see that D Snow Resident got 10 points. Okay. 
So you, when you, you when you make a mistake, uh, you fall in the water. When you make a mistake, the, the chair will actually go down. So you have to make a few mistakes before you get in there. Okay. And uh, basically to make the quiz chair go down, um, one thing that you have to do is when you add your, we're creating your questions, you have to assign a negative value. So when you're adding your multiple choice questions, the one that's correct, you set it at 100% grade and the ones that are incorrect, you can set zero. But if you actually set them to be negative 100, then the quiz chair will go down. If not, it just won't go down. Oops. So the way the sharks work is they have a scanner and they're constantly scanning the area and they'll basically attack. They'll swim around the tank and then they'll attack the uh, nearest avatar. Questions are very difficult, Fire. Probably coming from the same books as your Lindenwood Square, Carilia. <laughs> oh, I, I must look to see whether or not... Um, oh, I was right, though. You got it right. The killer whale yeah. who could... Who Two could, whales who sleep. sleeping They sleep vertically. vertically. <laughs> According to my quiz, they do, and no one believes me. And I haven't had a chance to check if that's right or wrong. You got my Mr. Hat. If you touch Mr. Hat, he's... If you touch Mr. Oh, Hat, I think you should ask Mr. Hat. Oh, I think you should ask Mr. Hat. <laughs> the root preem selected was the when uh, the root was in the hmm, I guess you'll have to take your seat, Kyle. Damn it! Ha <laughs> ha! Mr. Hat has a So this is pretty much the end of our um, presentation, but we're going to stick around because we have more time. We still have eight minutes left. So I guess since we're all here, we might as well just stay here um, and answer any questions you have. Um, I want to say thanks once again for inviting us to SL Languages. Um, it's been a great to present, and I hope you guys have a good presentation. Thank you very much uh, for, for being here. Anyone has questions? And I've fallen in the water. Uh, where's the shark? I haven't. Ooh, I'm still up here. I'm going to take a picture of that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyone has any questions, just feel free while I get eaten by a shark. You're doing really good, Karelia. You're really hot. Oh, no! You can use Camtasia to record it, can't you? Oh, no! I've got yes, it! you can! Ten. Yes! Oh, I'm so satisfied. Right, you've sold it to me. <laughs> this is great. Look at this. She got 40 points. That's awesome. I also want to have the experience of being eaten by a shark. That's the trouble. It's a bit like Hangman, where people, you know, these <laughs> interactive games, and people actually want to see what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, you only have one shark in there. Anyone who hasn't tried the chair, please um, feel free to Try sit down is. and take the quiz. That won't work. The quiz... The quiz questions come on the uh, top right. I hadn't seen them uh, originally on the top right of your screen. Oh, I, I have a, you, a, um... a question. Is that Melinda? Yes, it is. Oh, um, hi, Melinda. It's more... Hi, it's more of an administrative question. Uh, you misunderstood me when I said that I do administrative bit with Moodle. I was saying that the university oh. administrates our Moodle in an internet uh, uh, environment. How easy is it to transfer, for example, if I get this, the, the avatar school, or I'm sorry, avatar classroom, how easy is it to transfer that to uh, what's controlled by a big university? Does that make any sense? Uh, yeah, it does. Um, I'll, I'll start by answering, and then Ed, if you have anything to add, just please jump in. Basically, um, we've got, it, um, Sloodle can totally, all, all, this, all the activities that you you have created in Sloodle can be backed up using the standard Moodle backup. Um, so it's all com it's compatible with the backup. And um, to install on your university, you would need to install the Sloodle module um, into the Moodle mod folder um, in your in your Moodle.
And once you do that, um, you'll basically have Sloodle on your university's um, machine, your university server, and then you would simply restore the course, or restore the course of your Sloodle. Does that make sense? I, sort of, but I don't do so, any so, of the that module. I don't do any of the admin of the module. I mean, it's all you have to request it through a special service and, and whatnot. So I was, that's just what I was asking if, I, I mean, I'm sure I'd, they would know how to do it, but I would be able to do yeah. it. Is that correct? So, 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 so I, um, yeah, so um, Avatar Classroom, the Avatar Classroom side of, of the thing is really designed to run on our, on our system that we administer. Um, but that means that it's not connected to your Moodle um and you may have a policy that forbids you from you know using some outside Moodle. Um, so that may mean that it's quite tricky for you to use the avatar classroom as it's set up and it means that you're going to have to probably you know get them to install the Sloodle module um, on your Moodle. Um, now it, it is possible I think like fire said using a kind of a, a course backup and loading that in it is possible to do that um, with the and get the avatar classroom stuff as well. Um, but it's not as easy as Avatar Classroom is designed to be, you know. Um, now, as far as what your admin guy would have to do, basically it's, in, it's installing a Moodle module, um, which just depending on people's policies, sometimes that's uh, an easy thing to do. And, um, you know, sometimes, you know, you could just say to the guy, okay, follow these instructions and uh, on the, just show them Sloodle.org and, uh, and say follow these instructions and maybe they can just do it for you. Um, but it may be that they have a policy that they, they won't do it for you. You know. Um, also, if okay. Well, I'll I'll talk to. Them. Yeah. Yes, I'll talk I'll talk to them about it. But um, getting yeah. administrative things done is not is never easy. It's yeah. The, the other thing is, if you, are you actually on internet so that your Moodle isn't even accessible from outside? Right. Yes. If if you are, then it may not even work in with Second Life because Second Life is going to be outside your firewall, and that needs to talk to your Moodle. Um, yeah, typically there were, quite a, like, there, were, there were quite a few people I knew in Korea that were using uh, Second Life in their universities, and uh, uh, it was difficult for them. Uh, like some, some people had an easy time, they just go to the inter their administrator and say, hi, we need this port opened. They would open that in their firewall, and then Second Life would work fine. But I know some other people in Japan tried the same thing, and their tech people just wouldn't allow it. So it, I guess it depends on the university even if you can get Second Life to work on your machines in your lab. The okay, thank you very much. About, thank okay. you. So there's a question about like, um, OpenSim. Um, so, yeah, so the, the situation with Google used to, uh, used to be in, in 1.2 that it was designed really for Second Life, um, but somebody um, contributed some, some stuff to, to build an OpenSim, but from Sloodle 2, we decided we're going to support OpenSim properly. So it's designed to work um, well with OpenSim. Um, we have uh, an IAR you can download for OpenSim, and we also have one of those for um, Browser Classroom, which is still a little bit kind of beta, but um, we, we can work with you to get it working well. Uh, yes, um, yep, works with Moodle up to 2.3, which is the current Moodle. All right, we will need to wrap up. Everyone, I'm sorry to uh, cut the, the story short, but you feel free, feel free to uh, uh, contact Fire Center and Edmund um, by either uh, IM or uh, if you could uh, probably give uh, the uh, link again to Avatar Classrooms, Fire Center or Edmund in the uh, local chat. I just put our contact. As, um, I just yes. put our our contact. If you just email support at avatarclassroom.com, that email will come to both Edmund and I. So um, you get two brains instead of just one. Um, so you can contact us using uh, support at avatarclassroom.com and our website's uh, avatarclassroom.com. Fantastic. Thank you very very much for this tour. Uh, it was absolutely fabulous and always enlightening. So. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you for this great setup as well. Yes, applause.
for anyone who wants to find out more um, about what is coming next, uh, we do have. Hang on a second, I'm just trying to get my windows right. Um, Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Great. Help on slides or anything? Well, most people have been here, standing here. It's, um, we might encourage people to gather in front of us here. Yes. <laughs> you can sit here if you like. But then I'll be totally lost. Nobody will be. I didn't, I do have slides, but I didn't think I needed them because we are going on an expression. So that, that's fine. It's up to you. you. You know, you've got that possibility. If you want to, I've got the HUD that goes with this, but um, equally, very happy to just listen to you. Okay. And I'm down to moderate you. So what's to moderate you? It sounds as if I'm moderating you to be moderator. <laughs> I have heard that it would be nice if we stayed here for 15 minutes to give anyone yeah. some time to have a break or time to do that. Yeah. And I have heard that it has been possible without education and uh, entertaining and a decent lunch. So I thought I'd be nice to make that possible. And then after 15 minutes, I will just start joining us. Yes. Is it okay if I do? You want to go and get one and come back? I'll just go to get one and meet you. Thank okay. You. Bye. So yes, Marius, if you stay here, we'll have 15 minutes stationary here, then we go on the tour. I actually think that's a really, really good development that we've got going here at this um, conference because it does give people a chance to gather and give people a chance to know what the rules are, if you like. And what I'd suggest to all of you who are arriving now, if you'd like to make friends with me, I won't be offended if you defriend me later, but it would be useful if you make friends with me so that if you get lost, you can IM me and I can TP you. So don't worry, I will not, I never ever get offended if people don't accept my friendship or if people defriend me, but that might be an idea to start with. And then we don't lose people. So me, um, I'm speaking, Karelia Condor here, Karelia Condor for the moment. And it may be that you want to befriend Inga as well when 